Starting off this countdown, we have the Baboon Human. In October of 1984, Stephanie Faye Beauclair, otherwise known as Baby Faye, was born with hypoplastic left heart syndrome, meaning the left side of her heart did not grow properly. Sadly, no human heart donor could be found. So they decided to give her the heart of a baboon. In fact, she was the first infant who got a heart from an animal. And at this time, no infant had successfully received a heart transplant, even with a human heart. But it worked for baby Faye. Sadly, she lived for less than a month before passing away. In our number nine spot, we have Paracelsus. Paracelsus is known for being a Swiss physician, scientist, and alchemist in the 1500s during the Renaissance. He didn't necessarily experiment with crossbreeding humans with animals, but he did experiment with making humans tiny and ginormous. Also, he was seemingly evil slash insane, so I just wanted to put him on this list. Paracelsus was convinced he could grow giants and tiny humans by growing them from a jar of Yep. Apparently he would keep the jar in a warm place and feed the creatures blood to make them grow. I can just see him sprinkling in some blood into that jar. <laughs> Apparently he was quite successful and managed to grow tiny humans, but allegedly the small creatures turned on him and ran away. <laughs> Naturally. They were said to be a foot high. In our number eight spot, we have Irving Wiseman. Irving Wiseman was working at Stanford University as a researcher when he was given permission to inject a mouse with human brain cells. They just wanted to see what would happen. They were instructed to stop the experiment once the human-like behaviors got to a specific point like improved memory or problem solving, because then they'll have a pinky in the brain sitch and the concept of that only sounds good in the cartoon world. I'm not ready for a mouse world takeover anytime soon. In our number seven spot, we have Gordon Gallup and his team of scientists. Okay, so not saying Gordon Gallup is the evil scientist, but more that all of the scientists that consented to do this in the first place may have been operating from an evil frequency. Or perhaps they were just doing what they were told because it's their job. Because let's be real, the real powerful people that make the decisions are the ones funding such projects as these. But since I have no idea who funded this, as that would probably take too much digging that I don't have time for and it will probably just lead us to the US government, <laughs> we're going to just call this spot Gordon Gallup and his team of scientists. Gordon Gallup was once one of the leading experts in evolutionary psychology and he worked with a team of scientists in the 1920s on interbreeding humans with chimpanzees. He leaked to the press that they were actually successful. The experiment was conducted at the Orange Park Laboratory in Florida. Everyone proceeds to Google the financial backers there. This is where a female chimpanzee was inseminated with human the animal not only became pregnant, but then proceeded to give birth to a living being, a human Z. But get this, they did not allow the human Z to live. After all of that, it was euthanized. What the heck, man? Potentially harmed this animal by impregnating it only to kill its baby cub. <sighs> My inner future mama bear is poking through and I don't like this. In our number six spot, we have another group of scientists, the Belgian scientists. It really is so hard to name just one scientist responsible because it really does take a village to raise a child, and in this case, to create a mutant cow. Yes, a team of Belgian scientists started back in the 1800s to breed native cattle with short horn cattle, and over time, they only selected the biggest and strongest, and eventually, that led them to creating the Belgian super cow. A ginormous cow that literally looks like it's on steroids, and I'm kinda, afraid of it. I'm, I'm very afraid of it. It is unclear why these experiments were being done. I can only assume for more meat. So I guess we can't call these scientists evil per se without a justified reason, but hopefully they have a good one because otherwise, leave those cows alone. In our number five spot, we have Juan Carlos Belmonte. Juan is a biologist at the Salk Institute in California that has been working with other scientists and researchers in China on creating a human animal chimera. Basically, a monkey embryo will be given human cells to create this. Now, before you get upset and say, 
What for? I think this may arguably be the best reason for doing this kind of experiment. The reason this is being done is to see if animals can possess organs such as livers and kidneys that are entirely human and can be used in the future as organs for transplants. As we do have a transplant shortage around the world, coming up with a solution to this is vital. Apparently every 10 minutes a new person is added to the waiting list for an organ transplant. So at this point it is unclear as to whether the experiment has been completely successful, but I'm sure we'll know in the upcoming years. In our number 4 spot we have Dr. Carl Clawberg. This guy is truly very evil. He was a doctor that would work in the infamous monstrous camps that I cannot name due to YouTube violation reasons, so please catch my drift. The monstrous camps during World War II, specifically the Poland camp. Apparently, originally, he was interested in sterilizing all of the women of the camp, and eventually, his interests expanded. He was allowed to experiment on thousands, but only 700 survived. He also artificially inseminated prisoners through a variety of methods and tormented his victims by claiming to have injected animal into their womb to create a monster. There are no reports that confirm this to be 100% true, as well as there are no reports of the after effects of this, so we have to conclude that this horrible, uh, unconsented experiment was thankfully a failure. Just pure evil. In our number three spot, we have Hiromitsu Nagauchi. Hiromitsu is a scientist from Japan that is leading a team at the University of Tokyo. He and his team plans to grow human cells in mice and rat embryos and then transport them into surrogate animals, similar to work being done at Stanford University in the US. The goal is yet again to continue to see if animals can produce human organs that can later be transplants for humans. Up until recently, Japan Japan was very strict as to how long the human cells in the embryos were allowed to be kept alive till, but recently the laws changed and they're allowed to be kept until the animal is brought to term. Whoa. This will help so much in terms of what they will be able to find through studying this process, but of course there are many ethical concerns around this experiment such as once this new animal is brought to term, then won't it be a baby? Some claim that this is pure evil to then destroy this baby after, but gosh, I wonder if the decision maker of these experiments struggle with this, cause I definitely would. In our number two spot, we have an unknown evil scientist that created the human sheep. In 2017, villagers of a small town in South Africa were frightened when a local sheep gave birth to a human sheep crossbreed. This is truly terrifying stuff that will haunt your dreams. Like terrifying. It will definitely haunt mine. Imagine human sheep wandering the world. No thanks. Clearly this experiment was done by some evil scientist that decided, heck, I'm going to just let this happen and see how it unfolds. No one knows exactly how it was done, but most think the sheep was just artificially inseminated. The baby born was a stillborn, but if it had made it out alive, I bet you the world would have been on the hunt for the person responsible. In our number one spot, we have Ilya Ivanovich Ivanov. Known from his title, The Red Frankenstein, who was said to have been the creator of artificial insemination. His interest eventually turned into being interested in crossbreeding. In the 1920s, he traveled to Africa after already successfully crossbreeding a zebra and a donkey, he now wanted to crossbreed a human and an ape. Apparently, after a while of living in Africa, he became desperate as his funds became increasingly low that he then began to inseminate African women with chimpanzees without their knowledge. Holy, that's disgusting. Eventually, when people found out about what he was doing, he was shut down and his name was forever tarnished and yeah, I'm glad because that's horrible. Starting off this countdown, we have the rat pigs. The Salk Institute for Biological Studies in the US has been known to run a number of crossbreeding experiments. One was performed on rats and pigs. The team of scientists decided to take stem cells from rats and inject them into pig blastocysts. However, this failed, and I mean I'm not surprised. Rats and pigs have different gestation times, and genetically they are very different. But imagine a pig that looked like a rat. Okay, that is terrifying. 
In our ninth spot today, we have the human mouse. Mice are constantly being experimented on in labs. This time, scientists in Japan tried to create a human mouse. Basically, they injected a mouse with human stem cells. They did this in an attempt to grow a human pancreas in the animal, but due to backlash, they have certain rules in place. At any point during the experiment, if the mouse is said to start developing a human type brain, then it has to be killed and the experiments have to stop. Thank gosh though, because uh, I'm not trying to have the world ruled by weird mutant human mice. No thank you. In our 8th spot today, we have the mice with human brain. So I know I just finished saying how the mice were killed if any human DNA was found in the brain, but in 2005, a professor at Stanford University was given permission to create a mouse-human hybrid. He did so by transplanting human brain stem cells into the brains of mice. Now, the main goal of his experiment was to be able to study neurodegenerative diseases like Parkinson's and Alzheimer's disease. Now, the first couple of rounds did not go so well. They found less than 1% of human cells in the rodent's brain. But by 2010, they found success. That's when they managed to, and I quote, use mouse stem cells to develop sensory hair cells which could combat human hearing loss. They also managed to make the mice more human. As in, the mice with the human brain cells were far more intelligent than the other mice. In our seventh spot, we have the human Z. Over the years, a number of scientists have run some wild tests on chimpanzees. Now, what makes these mammals of interest to them is because of how similar they are to humans. Humans and chimps share 98.8% of their DNA, hence why scscientists are trying to make a chimp-human hybrid. Ilya Ivanov was the first person to attempt to create a human-chimp hybrid. Ilya continued these experiments until the 1920s. During that time, the Soviet Union was also running the same experiments. In 2019, rumor has it that a team of researchers from the Salk Institute for Biological Studies in the US successfully produced the first human monkey chimeras. So yeah, I don't really know how I feel about that. I don't know. In our six spots, we have the conga. In the early 2000s, when scientists unearthed the conga skeletons in northern Syria, they had no idea what they were looking at. The skeletons looked like they belonged to horses, but they dated back to 2600 BC. And domestic horses wouldn't appear in the region for another 500 years, so they were a bit confused. Then they realized that this wasn't a horse, it was a human bred animal. In fact, this animal was a cross between a donkey and a wild ass. Apparently back then they were highly valuable and very expensive. Now it's believed that these kungas were created for warfare, because not only could they pull wagons, but it was believed that they would be tougher. The thing with donkeys is that they would get scared easily and they didn't need their donkeys running off mid battle but the wild asses, no one could tame them. So then they would breed them together and bam, it created an animal more desirable for them. We are now at our fifth and halfway mark with the human pig hybrid. The whole crossing humans with animal thing definitely creeps me out, but this one isn't what you think. They aren't creating a creature that is half human and half pig. Thank gosh, at least not yet. Instead, they are using the pigs to grow human organs inside of them instead of having patients wait for a donor. The first experiment was run in 2017, and an embryo was placed in an adult pig for four weeks. Then it was taken out to analyze, and the embryo survived and contained some human cells. Now they are going to figure out if pig embryos can handle enough human cells to create full human organs. However, a lot of people are against these experiments, saying that it is highly unethical. In our fourth spot, we have the dogs. A number of the dog breeds that you love have been severely crossbred. And when dog breeders get overcome by greed, they start to care more about money than they do about their dog's health. Take a look at this dog right here. This is a dog that suffers from short spine syndrome. You can see it has a squished body, huge jaw, and a really bad underbite. The dog was born from backyard breeding. The breeder was carelessly breeding a bunch of his dogs together. And this is the result, which is heartbreaking to see. And most of the time, these dogs are put down as no one wants to adopt them. Coming in at number three, we have the virus chimera. 
In 2017, Portuguese researchers decided to mess around with a mouse virus to create a chimera virus. Basically, a mouse virus with a human viral gene. Now, you're probably concerned like me because I read this and I'm like, oh, they're trying to create another outbreak or something. But no, apparently, this allows them to study viruses and how it impacts the rodent's body. But I will say that accidental outbreaks have occurred. In our second spot, we have the rabbit human mix. In 2003, a team of scientists in Shanghai managed to fuse human cells with rabbit eggs. In the United States, scientists have been trying to do the same thing, but their attempts were always unsuccessful. Move over, American scientists, the one in Shanghai, beat you to it. Now, this experiment was done to see if it can be used to grow cells or tissues for transplant patients. However, this experiment also had strict rules, and once the rabbit had human cells in its brain, it had to be destroyed. So they only let the human rabbit develop for a couple of days before they killed it and harvested it for stem cells. And in our number one spot today, we have the human demon sheep. Now, this is gonna keep you up at night for sure. In 2017, villagers in South Africa were horrified when a sheep gave birth to something that didn't look like a lamb, okay? In fact, it looked eerily human-like. As a result, people in the village were freaking out, saying that whatever was born was done by the works of the devil. In fact, rumor has it that this lamb was created from someone injecting the sheep with human sperm. Now, the lamb was still born, so it wasn't born alive. But still, how creepy is that? And many people in the village were convinced that beast and or witchcraft were behind this creature. In our number 10 spot, we have Vladimir Demikov. Vladimir is a scientist from the Soviet Union that tried to create a two-headed dog. Not making this up. Not in the regular crossbreeding way that you may assume. He literally amputated the body of one of the dogs and attached it to the other. This honestly makes me sick to talk about. The dogs only lasted four days before passing away, and guess what? He did it again. He did it again. The next experiment ended up with two dogs living for about a month. But guess what? He literally had no purpose for these experiments. Just the ego satisfaction of being able to say that he did it. Well, thankfully, he didn't because he doesn't deserve any satisfaction or praise. Just gross. In our ninth spot, we had the human Z attempts. In 1967, scientists in China were working on creating a human chimp mix. Sadly, not much information about these experiments have been disclosed to the public. But rumor has it that the experiments didn't really work. They wanted to basically create a chimp that could talk fluently in whatever language it was taught. Then in 1981, they tried this experiment again. They impregnated a female chimpanzee with human sperm. Turns out, the chimp did manage to get pregnant by it, but sadly passed away three months later due to complications. Coming in at number eight, we have the rat mouse. Scientists at the Salk Institute have found a way to grow the pancreatic tissue of a mouse inside of a rat. The mouse pancreas was able to grow inside of rats successfully. So they grew these new pancreases from mouse stem cells that were then placed in the bodies of the rats. And then when the pancreases were complete, they transplanted them back into the mice. Now the biggest thing about this experiment is that this technique could reverse diabetes in the mice. So they hope that one day they can grow organs inside the bodies of different animals and then you transplant those organs into humans to cure diabetes. Of course, there's still so much work to be done on this. The last thing they want is to grow a human organ inside of an animal and then have the recipient's body reject it. In our seventh spot, we have the killer bees. Did you know that killer bees were accidentally created by scientists? If they're out here creating bees that threaten the ecosystem, then who's to say they won't create animals that do the same? Basically, this all started in the 1950s. A biologist was commissioned by the Brazilian government to create a species of bees that would increase honey production. But along the way, things went wrong. The biologist himself didn't have much experience with animal breeding. In the end, bees from southern Africa and local Brazilian honeybees mated and it produced these angry killer bees. And then of course, 
thousands of these bees just accidentally escaped. Now, they get their name because when pissed off, they have been known to chase people down for more than a quarter mile. And on top of that, their stings are very painful. These bees are also aggressive towards other bees as well. So it puts them at risk, and now we're kind of just stuck with them. In our sixth spot today, we have the human mouse. In the late 90s, three doctors started doing experiments to try and create human body parts in a lab. One of these experiments involves growing a human ear on the back of a mouse. So they did this by creating an ear shaped scaffolding and putting cells of cartilage from a cow on it. They then put the mouse under anesthetic and placed this ear under its skin. Crazily enough, the mouse's body fed the cow cartilage cells. The scaffolding dissolved and the mouse grew this artificial shape of a human ear. But it was only the outside of an ear. Okay, it didn't work, there was no eardrum. Now you might be wondering why they did this. Well, their hope is that this will help plastic surgeons when reconstructing human ears for their patients. So they would create this ear on the mouse and then graft it onto the person. So you'd have an ear that is part mouse, part cow. We are now at our fifth and halfway mark with the goat with human milk. I swear I didn't make this up. It's real and I'm a little disturbed. But basically, scientists have figured a way for goats to produce human breast milk. They did this by transferring human breast milk enzymes and proteins into goat embryos. In the end, they found that the milk the goats were producing wasn't 100% human, but it contained 60% of the lysosome and lactoferrin found in human milk. Now, why do they want goats producing human breast milk? Well, it could feed and save babies in need. Plus, it would have a longer shelf life. Would you try this milk? Let me know in the comments below. I've heard breast milk is pretty sweet, but I don't think I wanna try it. Coming in at number four, we have the Belgian super cow. Now, you guys know how much I love cows. And if you didn't know, then hi, my name is Lindsay and I love cows. But this thing is terrifying. It's monstrous, okay? It's super ripped and it's just massive. The Belgian super cows were created back in the 1800s when Belgian scientists and farmers mixed native cattle with shorthorn cattle. Then over the time, they would select the biggest and strongest offsprings of each variety and then breed them together, so on and so on, bam! You got a super cow, which is definitely the biggest and strongest, and I understand why they call it the super cow. Like, just look at this beast, okay? It could crush anyone. In our third spot, we have the Enviro pig. So pig waste is actually pretty toxic. I mean, if you've seen the Simpsons movie, then you'd know all about it. I mean, that was a bit of an exaggeration, but still. Anyways, pig's waste contains really high levels of phosphorus. This phosphorus ends up in lakes and rivers and oceans and can cause a boom of algae. So scientists were trying to come up with a way for pigs to have less toxic waste, hence the creation of the Enviro pig. Enviro pigs are pigs with up to 65% less phosphorus in their excretements. This pig was first created in 1999 at the University of Guelph's farm in Canada. This pig had its phytase gene attached to a piece of mouse DNA. Now it's really complicated to explain, but here's an explanation, and I quote, the genetically altered pig was created using genetic material from a mouse and an E. coli bacterium to reduce phosphorus in the pig's feces. In the end, it made the pig excrete fewer pollutants. Moving on to number two, we have the pig with human blood. Now you're probably noticing a trend by now. Pigs and mice are the scientists' test subjects of choice. Researchers at Mayo Clinic in Minnesota have managed to create pigs made out of human blood. So the pigs have human blood pumping through their veins. Not only that, but some of the cells in the blood merge together to create pig-human cell hybrids. Now, the reason behind this all is to allow scientists to study how viral infections can transfer from animals to humans. And in our number one spot today, we have Oliver the Chimp. In the 1970s, there was a performing chimpanzee that received a lot of attention. His name was Oliver. Now, Oliver was really different from other chimps for a number of reasons. The main being that Oliver might have been a successful mix between a human and a chimp. Yeah, you heard me. A lot of doctors and scientists are convinced that Oliver was a human Z. It's believed that they inseminated a female chimp with male sperm and Oliver was the offspring. Now let's take a look at the facts. Oliver didn't look like other chimps. In fact, he had a more human-like appearance. He had a flatter face than other chimpanzees and he walked on two feet 
instead of all fours. He also preferred human females over female chimpanzees, and he understood humans very well. So could it be that Oliver was actually half human, half chimp? Mm -hmm.